Hey, we have a great video for you. Um, this is an all skills, all ages video uh, on drills for skills that you can do at home. They're, they're low impact, low, relatively low risk, uh, ways to build skill and have fun at home uh, to enhance your training. So uh, whenever you're working with partners, it's very important that you communicate very well and regularly. Uh, when we do things like locks, if my partner wants me to stop, they need to tap out, and I need to respect that and let go immediately. We're not going to be doing those types of locks today that have a lot of pain involved. Um, we're going to be doing a lock later, uh, preferably for the uh, Panthers and, and up. Ninjas can try it with their parents, and we'll coach you a little bit on that later as it comes. But make sure you respect them. If they say stop or if they say they're not comfortable, uh, it's very important that you listen to the person who's being subjected to uh, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. Because uh, for me, I have no risk here, but, but they do. So we want to make sure that we're really listening and communicating well with our partners, which is just another part of your black belt training at Vision Quest, which is developing a strong voice uh, and learning how to advocate for yourself. So to get started, uh, this whole lesson is to help you learn with telegraphing, uh, reading what your uh, opposition might be doing or thinking about doing, learning to build some intuition uh, uh, or, or gut instincts, uh, wh whatever you'd like to call that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is a, a sensitivity drill. Uh, so Mr. Burton is going to have his eyes closed and he's going to put his hand on my shoulder. See, no pain involved yet. He's going to keep his eyes closed. Yeah, he's got his eyes closed. And he's going to keep this here. My job is to lift or move one appendage at a time. And his job is to see if he can figure out which one it is that I've moved. And only do one at a time, uh, especially in the beginning. So if I lift a limb, right hand, that is correct. And then we try left foot. Yeah, left leg, OK. Say your right leg. Yes. And then we have left hand. Yeah, that one's by far the trickiest. If you get that down, right, and you can switch and take turns. Uh, if you get that down, tell them you're going to do a sequence of two or a sequence of three and then see if they can recall everything you did. And that would look something a little like this. So maybe I go, I'm going to give you a sequence of three. Okay. So I have one, two, Three. Right leg, right hand, left hand. Or sorry, right right leg, right hand, left leg. Nope. Darn. You want to do it again? Sure. One, two, three. Ah, oh, it's left leg, right hand, left leg. Ah, you got it. Go ahead and open your eyes. So it's a great one to learn how to feel what they're doing while they're doing it without relying on eyesight, right? Because if he grabs me from behind, I have that connection now, but I can't see him. If he goes to pull me into a punch, I can feel that. If he is trying to push me, I can feel that too. Uh, and it just helps us be a little bit quicker in our reflex, uh, learning to understand what's going to come our way. So that's the eyes closed uh, partner telegraph drill. Uh, the next one we're going to work is really fun. I call this one ninja shadow. And this one has different layers and levels to it as well, if you like. But in the beginning to start off, we have the mirror, uh, or the shadow, and we have the ninja. So my job is to move at a steady, controlled pace, almost like I'm doing Tai Chi. And their job is to match me, move for move, inch for inch, as I do what it is that I'm doing. And their job is to see how well they can do that and keep up. I can move multiple limbs at a time. And they can see if they can work with that. And it doesn't matter how I'm moving or what I'm moving. What we're doing is, is we're training the subconscious brain to identify movement centers. We call them uh, articulating centers. Uh, all movement has to come from this. And when we can open our gaze and kind of pay attention to all four at the same time, we start to learn sooner when they're making a move and what move it is they're doing. And that's how it helps us with the telegraphing. It's also a ton of fun because you can make funny faces. You can do all kinds of stuff. Now, if you start to move too fast, right, your shadow's going to tap you on the shoulder like Peter Pan. And that means focus, right? Oh, 
I gotta slow it down a little bit. Um, as you get good, you can try and go faster and faster, but I would definitely not start out moving quickly. But both people are in place, we're not moving around. The next level of this would be now you can actually move around. You're still facing each other, but as I move one way, oh, you're coming with me. Oh, gotcha, okay. okay. my shadow, not really my mirror. And then I can go back, and I can move to the side, and I can move back, but we still need to make sure we're facing each other the whole time. Gotcha. The next one after that is now they're actually behind me. Now they're literally my shadow. And I'm just going to walk around and do things that I would do. And their job is to try and match me and see how well they can follow along. Okay? And then again, just like the first one, you switch, you take turns. Okay? You switch and take turns. So that's my ninja shadow drill. Uh, the next one we're going to work on is a drill called Deka Dana, uh, taught to me by one of my teachers. And this one's really simple, really slow. Uh, and so he's going to reach his hand for my chest. And my job is to turn my body and move it away. And then my job is to try to push their chest. And then he comes for me. And we want this to be this smooth, fluid drill. And I can make it go lower. I can have it come higher. We can start to move in a circle. I can come back the other way. I can go backwards. I can go forwards. And you're just working on that, turning the torso as you move it out of your way, nice and easy, back and forth. And now we're learning those telegraphs and putting them into a real timing scenario. Nothing's fast, nothing's hard. This is just giving our body a chance to translate from the mind into itself. And this is a good place for ninjas uh, to, to end. Uh, but if they want to move on to what's next, they can. For ninjas, if you want more than that with Deka Dana, as he's reaching for me, I'm going to be his coach. And I'm either going to say palm heel or different, plot, uh, different types of blocks. So as we're going, I might say, OK, outward block. And then he or she would have to do an outward block. And then we go back to what we were doing. And then I might say uh, palm heel. And then they have to find a palm heel. You could say duck. Uh, you could say uh, lots of different types of things. Um, to kind of help them with that decision-making process while they're moving and thinking uh, at the same time because it's very slow, very soft. If they don't block in time, that's all that happens is just this gentle, this gentle little nudge. That's all we want. For my panthers and above, or ninjas and parents of ninjas who are brave, uh, we're going to do a shoulder lock arm bar uh, elliptical. So he's reaching with Deka Dana. And I'm going to go first. Let's slow it down. That's light speed. And as I'm here, I'm going to go over and under the arm. So my arm is underneath his arm. And then I'm going to put my other hand on top of this hand. And then I'm going to get him to lean forward. And that's the first part of this. This is a shoulder lock. This person's not giving me any resistance. Because if they resist, I have to go harder, and that's not an equation we want today. As we rewind, as we're coming through, this is what we call the outside of the arm, and then I'm passing to the inside. Once my hand gets between his ribs and his arm, I need to scoop forward some. And then it's almost like I'm hitchhiking. My arm comes back. It lays over top, and then I put my hand on top here. If I just push down now, I get a different response out of them. I want to push to a point in front of their person towards the ground to get them to lean forward. We'll come this way to do it from a different angle. Let's slide this way so we're not too close to the end of this song. One, Deka Dana. From here, I drop. Oh, I see the space between the ribs. I move in, hitchhike, and then brace. I can move my feet if I need to. I want his nose to go towards the floor in between his feet. And that's a shoulder lock. That's the first bit that we're working on in this last lock flow drill that we're doing. Once I have my shoulder lock here, I'm going to take 
my right hand, the one that's not wrapped around his arm, my free hand, I'm going to ask a really big question, and I'm going to go to the other side and move it between us and then in front of me. And I'm going to hug it tight to my person, and I'm going to take my shoulder and point forward until I get them to step. I'm not going hard and fast, just enough to get them to step. And that's the next piece. So as we're doing Dekadena, we're going nice and soft and smooth. I have my pass and I move up. I hitchhike and brace, shoulder lock. Really big question. Move it between us and then in front of me. Notice my other arm's not tied up anymore. All I'm going to do is turn my palm up and hug it towards my body. I take my free shoulder and I'm just going to push forward to get them to step. That's the next bit. So we'll go to the other side, get a different angle. Thank you for the dance, sir. Coming through, one, two, three. He likes to move so quickly. I'm going to go uwe on you. Shifu. This hand comes all the way up and around between us, in front of me, and hug, trying to get them to step. The next piece from here is to get my other hand up. Little question. And I'm going to make a plus sign between his arm and my arm. From here, I'm going to lean him forward. I could step with this, and that's OK, too. But I'm going to lean him forward. Now, if I wanted to keep looping this, I pass, I pass, right? I can go that route. But really what I want to do is get back to Deca Dana so my partner gets a chance. So once I arm bar them down and I'm passing here, now he's going to block it. And now we're back to Deca Dana. Slow it down. And then it'd be his turn whenever he's ready to go for the shoulder lock. And then he asks a really big question, goes all the way over, passes it between us, and then in front of himself, hugs it to himself, uses his shoulder to get me to step, brings his other hand up, plus sign, levers knee down. As he goes to pass, we're back to Dekadena again. And then it would be my turn to move in. Big question. Pass, hook. Shoulder, arm, and down. Pass. Back to Deca Dana again. One more time for you, Mr. Burton. Under and around. Locking down. Big question. Pass it around. Hugs it to his body. Shoulder first. Arm second. Huzzah. All right. And that's our lock flow drill for you. Don't worry about your feet. Do whatever feels natural. Everything is very soft and relaxed and smooth. There should be no worry of getting hurt during this drill if you do it the correct way. Uh, but don't worry about your feet, whether you're front, back, want to do some, some salsa type stuff, I don't care. Um, as long as you're being respectful to your partner and finding your way through the arms. We hope you've enjoyed this Drills for Skills set. We'll see you next time.